you need uh, to own the property or some other assets for at least uh, six months uh, before you can rely on uh, the process from the sale of this property or some other uh, assets. And also you'll need to prove uh, that you fully owned uh, the property or the assets were fully under your control or under the control of your UK uh, spouse. Hello, my dear friends. Uh, Svetlana Shapak, the founder of UKVisaSuccess.com is here. This is video number four from the six parts a video series which I've created in order to help you understand how the uh, financial aspect of a uh, UK spouse visa application uh, works. So this particular video is all about uh, cash savings and uh, the documents you'll need to submit uh, in support of the application in order to meet the financial aspect uh, of your application. So let us begin. But before I start, guys, I wanted to, uh, to let you know that uh, this particular video is an extract uh, from the How to Meet the Financial Requirements of Your British Spouse Visa Application When Applying from Outside the UK online course. Uh, this course consists of uh, five lessons where I explain how to meet the financial requirements of your UK uh, spouse visa application. Uh, this particular requirement causes lots of grief and uh, lots of refusals because people do not understand uh, which documents they will need to provide in support of the application and also how uh, to prove that they meet uh, this requirement. If you'd like to know more about uh, this uh, online course and how to get uh, instant access, you're very welcome uh, to click the link below this video. Okay, now let us have a look at category D, the cash category. Uh, what documents you'll need to provide in order to uh, prove that you meet uh, the financial requirement. And uh, there are a number of documents in which you will need uh, to submit, but I would like you to know that irrespective uh, of your circumstances and ways uh, of acquiring your cash, uh, the Home Office will always expect you to submit uh, to uh, documents. First of all, as usual, uh, this is going to be your personal bank statement showing that you uh, or your partner held at least uh, the level of cash savings relied upon in the application throughout the entire six months period before the date of the application. So you'll need to have your cash for at least six months before you can rely on it. And secondly, and very importantly, uh, for you to note that you'll also need to submit a declaration uh, confirming the sources of your cash savings. Uh, Rather interestingly, it doesn't really matter for how long you had your savings in this bank account, you'll still need to provide the declaration. Guys, as always, you'll need to remember that the account uh, where you have your cash will need to be with a financial institution which is regulated by the Financial Services Authority. And if the account is abroad, if it's outside the UK, then the appropriate regulatory uh, body for the country in which that institution is operating. And also, we should not uh, forget about Appendix a finance, you'll need to ensure that the financial institution does not appear on the list of excluded institutions under appendix finance of the immigration rules. Uh, foreign currency, uh, this is uh, the standard uh, rule. Uh, if you have your savings abroad and if it is in foreign currency, the Home Office will convert the amount into uh, pounds sterling and they will be using the website which is uh, called oanda.com. That's www.oanda.com or oanda. And the exchange rate which they will be using will be on the date of the application. And if you have several accounts abroad uh, and several here in the UK, what the Home Office will do, they will convert first of all uh, the amount into pound sterlings and then only after converting all the amounts, they will add everything uh, together to see uh, the total amount. And the Secretary of State will completely uh, disregard any fluctuation in the exchange rate before the date of the application, the decision maker will always base the conversion of the foreign uh, currency income uh, or cash savings into sterling on the exchange rate uh, at the date of the application. 
without party promises. As you probably know by now, uh, with some very tiny exceptions, the Home Office does not uh, usually accept promises. However, there is a perfectly legal and acceptable way of bypassing this particular rule. And the way to do this is this. If you have any third party who is willing to give you some cash as a gift, uh, all you need to do is just to put this amount which they've given you into your bank account or into the account uh, of your partner or in joint account and let it sit there for six months. And after six months, uh, this will be yours and this may be included as part of you meeting the financial aspect of your average spouse application. You uh, should always remember two things here. First of all, uh, this should be a genuine gift, so it's not a loan. You should not repay this back. And secondly, you will still need uh, to provide a declaration about the sources of this particular cash. Then uh, you need to also provide the Home Office with evidence confirming that you will be able uh, to get immediate access uh, to your savings. And it uh, can include savings held in a pension savings account as long as you can provide them with evidence confirming that it can be withdrawn instantly. And the way to do this is just to get a letter from your bank. Uh, to, it has to be on the headed paper to confirm that the amount of uh, cash savings you have for how long you had it and that you can withdraw it immediately and it doesn't really matter whether or not uh, this is going to be withdrawn uh, with or without a penalty. Overdrafts are rather logically and quite uh, predictably, uh, the Home Office will not uh, count any overdraft facilities uh, towards meeting financial requirements, irrespective of uh, flexible arrangements which you may have uh, with the bank and also to, uh, with your overdraft uh, size. Very interestingly, you need to remember this rule as well because uh, a number of applicants can be caught by this. If you or your partner acquired funds or savings uh, when you were in the UK, you'll need to ensure that you have done so lawfully. So in other words, you'll need to show uh, that uh, you had a permission at the time when you earned this amount, had to, you had the permission to remain in the UK and that you did so without any breach of any conditions imposed in your stay. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say um, you were here on a student visa and then you met your uh, future spouse. You've earned a considerable amount when you started, uh, let's say, to obtain a bachelor degree in the UK. Um, and then you you would like to rely on these uh, savings as part of your future application as a spouse of a British citizen. The Home Office may want to check the circumstances under which you earned the amount in question. Uh, this is to ensure, for example, that you were not working as a student for more than 20 hours a week during your term time. If you did, you'd be in breach of immigration conditions imposed on your stay. And uh, as a result, the Home Office will completely disregard regards the amount you were trying to rely on. And not only that, uh, it is uh, quite likely that they may refuse uh, the application on suitability grounds. Uh, winnings uh, or legacy. Legacy is an amount of money or property left uh, to someone in a will. And this is a perfectly acceptable way of meeting the financial requirements as long as you can provide evidence confirming that these are paid out uh, winnings uh, or legacy. So uh, you already have cashed uh, this amount. Investments, uh, stock shares, bonds or trust funds. You can transfer funds uh, from investments, stock shares, bonds or trust funds uh, within six months before the date of the application. And here you need to remember two rules. These funds will need to be yours or and under your control or the control of your partner for at least six months before the date of the application. And the second rule to remember that you'll need to submit a portfolio report or other relevant documentation from a financial institution regulated by the appropriate regulatory body from the country in which that institution is operating and uh, this report will need to confirm uh, the funds ownership in the form of investments uh, stock shares bonds or trust funds and additionally it should also state the funds cash value at the beginning and at the very end of the six months period of time and i would like to finalize uh, this video by explaining a, a very common a way of meeting the financial requirements a way of relying on the property sale 
process. Uh, can you rely on the process from the sale of your house or some other assets, uh, property or land? The answer is yes, you can. However, again, you'll need to uh, meet uh, three rules. The first one is you or your partner will need to prove that you own the property for at least six months before the date of the application and you will need to provide documents confirming that you or your partner owned it at the date of the sale. Rule number two is that uh, if you own this property together with a third party, um, and by the third party here I mean not your partner but someone else, you'd also need to state uh, and, uh, and provide documents confirming what was your share in that property. Uh, you need to remember that the Home Office will only count uh, the process from the sale of your part. And you'll need to provide additional documents if you rely on the uh, net uh, sale process. So these documents will need to confirm that you have repaid any mortgage or a loan uh, secured on the property or the relevant share of the property. And additionally, uh, these documents will need to verify that you paid any taxes and professional fees associated uh, with the sale. Okay, so what uh, these documents may include? First of all, this one is an obvious one, registration information or some kind of documents. And if it's in the UK, this uh, can be the land registry documents. And if it's outside, then uh, it should be an overseas equivalent to prove uh, the ownership. Secondly, there should be a letter from my solicitor or some other relevant professionals uh, if uh, the sale took place overseas, instructing in the uh, property's sale, confirming uh, the sale price and additional uh, relevant information and then it can be a letter from a lender from a bank or the build, building society and these letters always will need to be on the added paper and it also has to be written by someone in senior position and it will need to confirm that uh, any mortgage or loans secured loans on the property have been fully repaid and also there can be any documents confirming the payment of taxes or some other professional fees associated and these were just some examples of what documents you can provide uh, to support uh, the application but of course if you have any other documents uh, which uh, will prove the ownership of the property and also that it was under your control and also the amount of the process and that everything has been repaid then by all means you'll need to submit it together uh, with the application I would like to invite you to visit this page ukvisasuccess.com forward slash more where you'll find plenty of free immigration resources explaining various immigration rules and I also invite you to subscribe to a new very very succinct and short newsletter where I'll be updating you on various changes in the world of UK immigration law and also I will be sending various exclusive invitations to the members of UK visa success.com community you'll only be able to get the software if you are subscribed to this newsletter have an amazing week guys mm -hmm.